surprising to me that he decided to join the tournament. <laughs> of course, Bug. <laughs> okay, so finally, after some delay, we're gonna have this race get underway shortly. This matchup. As a reminder to the viewers, it is best of three. Here we go. And they're ready to go. I am super excited for this race. Same here. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but I'm just so excited. Yeah, two close friends of mine, Runner Watcher and Nick Spaco. It's really, really cool when you see your some of your friends race each other. And they're ready to go. And there they go. Especially against each other, like I had to watch already in the second round. Actually I'm gonna pop out the chat here so I can read the chat while I watch the multi-stream. Do you have the multi-stream up, Bob? Or yeah. are you watching on the restream? Okay, perfect. Thank you. So we're not that delayed. I just refreshed both streams. So, not much to talk about here. Yeah, All right, definitely. and why? <laughs> Super standard. Why two strats from both of them? Aim for that 360. And both get it. No problem at all. Nobody went for the 61, though. I think I've only seen one 61 in the entire tournament, and I think it was Graham's cat who got it. Some people would say it's weird to see Xpaco not getting that cloud there, but you know, NMG sticks to it. Sander got two three six ones against me on Saturday. Oh, I see Carrie. Didn't notice. I did watch that match though. So. But I do remember Dramscat getting in. Pair of 59s it looks like. Yep, optimal movement through those brown platforms and getting some advantage of Mary's horizontal speed. It's like synchronized swimming. Yep. And that's what we get for most of like top tier runners. Uh, most of World 1 is gonna be almost synced. Now I know Papa's gonna go for it. Darn. Yeah, he goes and he doesn't get it. And Runner Watcher is struggling here a bit, uh, losing a bit of key speed on that last platform. But he's only one in game second off from Xpaco, so just right there. I wonder what the shell jump count is in this tournament. I don't have any yet. Um, I think Dramscat got one as well. I'm not sure if Aaron got one in his race. I don't remember. But if I've Dram seen at least one. If Cat got one, then I'm gonna smile. <laughs> Yeah, he got one. I'm sure he got one. Sweet. It is so good to see Cat play again. Yeah, it is, and hearing his voice just makes the entire SMD League community smile at the same time. He's just so loved by everyone. Um, and right here we saw Xpaco doing a little bit uh, riskier strats on Iggy. Uh, like two in-game seconds faster than Runner Watchers from one. But still pretty solid. Still really could be anyone's race at this point. Oh, okay. Dramscat got the the shell jump, but then missed the platform. Oof. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. But yeah, have Paco with a really nice 41. Looks to be about a second apart. Doesn't matter, God swag, yeah. That's how it works for SMW, am I right? <laughs> Actually, when I was commentating for Calco's race, Aaron thought that Calco didn't get the K because of swag, but I knew that Calco had actually forgot about it completely. When you run no cape runs about 10,000 times, you can do that, I guess. So I think Rudder Watcher had a bit of an issue. Oh, and he slides on the crowds. 
Yeah, Runner Watcher getting hit by that Super Koopa and losing his Fire Flower, which means that he won't be able to do the damage boost in Room 5 of Bowser's Castle. Yeah, unless he can figure out the Star World Force strat for getting it back up. It's really hard to do this, so I don't expect him to do it. So that at least the question, will he do 5 or 7? Xbox 5 showing that consistency with a really, really solid run up to this point. No major mistakes at all. Yeah, definitely looking like a good sub-11 if he keeps it up. Wouldn't surprise me. Oh no. Stomps the Koopa. Yeah, Runner Watcher stomps the Koopa in the dry room, so he ends up losing time. There. Oh, things are getting worse. The domino effect gets hit by that fish trying to get that turn block. Oh no! Oh man, that uh, fish came in really fast on him. And choosing to go back for the feather, standard. To X Paco with the 369 big boo door. Incredible. For a race, that's pretty good. I don't think I've seen a 69. I've seen 68, a bunch of them. I've but... gotten one. And I you got, you one, got one today? Yeah, nice. That's amazing. That's really, really, really clean and good uh, donut secret house. With sick brag wall clip. <laughs> Seven year bust. Yo, Steverson. Bold statement right there. Seven year fire bust. Okay, let's see those emotes in chat if you got it. Can we get some Super M37s, Mishola? And he goes to the right. Very nice. Yo, Ekis Paco, this really clean run. Yeah, it's and... much safe. Excuse me. Go no, ahead. go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna mention it's much safer to go left, but choosing to go right. Oh no, problems here. Oh boy. So X Paco gets hit in Sarl too, and his yo his baby Yoshi eats his fire flower, which means he can't all he can't get that um damage boost in room five. So I feel like, and he leaves the baby Yoshi behind. He fed him the fire flower, I believe, so he couldn't take them anymore. Oh yeah, that's right. So now he's just swimming slowly through Star World 2. And Runner Watcher able here to take some time on x -Paco. That was okay there, 283. But Paco, oh, this is so painful not having the baby Yoshi. Yeah, <laughs> atomic oof. So Paco is gonna go for the no cave strats. Interesting. I'm not surprised considering he also has a no cave record for 11 exit. Oh, he does? Yeah, today I learned. Yeah. <laughs> The note cave, I believe he's still. No, he had it. I think Silver Star has it now. Wouldn't surprise me at all. So he's gonna go for the baby strats here, uh, the no cave strats. And let's see what he decides to do. He's gonna grab that shell. Oh, he's gonna try and dupe that cape. Oh, this is a risky move. It's gonna cost him some time now, too. Uh oh. That doesn't get it. Doesn't get the do, but now he's gonna try and get B speed to get to finish Star Wars 4. Oh, it's gonna be interesting to see what he does here. I think he's gonna go Is for he gonna it. go for the low he's, percent stress? He's going to do it. <laughs> this is I'm clenching. Please. He doesn't get it. Well, it's safe to say then, this is going to be Rudder Watcher's game to lose. Okay, so now he's gonna grab the baby Yoshi. 
And he's gonna be able to fly with Yoshi under. And save some time here, but... Does he have peace speed? I don't think he does. Oh, no, this is I... gonna be rough. Yeah, I don't think he does either, which is why he decides to... Oh my goodness, what is he trying this... to do? Oh, this is not a fun spot. <laughs> I don't think I don't think there's anything he could do. There's a blue Yoshi way back. So low percent again. So on the other side there's Runner Watcher with a really clean room too. But then he gets hit on room seven um, by one of the last uh, Bowser statues. And he loses his first cape and then he gets the other one, but then he gets hit and loses both of his capes. So now he won't be able to do cape kill. Gonna have to play real safe here. I feel like it's gonna go for that Yoshi strat again. I think he has P-Speed now. He's gonna get it this time. Come on, Benjels. Come on, Benjels. Now he's gonna go for Bowser's Castle. All no cape. One mistake from Runner Watcher and Sparkle could have it, but he looking really solid on that Bowser without a cape, so... And he's got the power up now, which should make him feel more secure. Hey, Sparkle gonna go for that cape in room 3. Probably to save some time on Bowser on that cape kill. Rudder Watcher unable to go for ball skip. Michael we'll gets to that cape. I wonder what he's gonna go for. Probably room five. Oh, this could be a bad spot. Yeah, it's bad. You can't get that Mecha Koopa. Mm, now he's gotta wait another cycle. X Paco getting hit by that crusher loses his cape that he just got in room in room three. Now he's gonna go for the capeless strats for this room. He gets through that last Mecha Koopa really solid, and he's in Bowser. As Runner Watcher exits phase number two. Really waited to get that Mecha Koopa. Didn't go for the skip. Oh, until a couple bounces later. Which is fine. Should be the last hit. That's it. SRL shows 1245 for Rudder Watcher. GG. Yep. GG's. GG's to him. Paco into phase two. So, reminder that this is a best of three match, so we're gonna see at least another race from these runners. You're Paco right. Is gonna go for that ball skipping. And he gets it. Oh, I feel like, yeah, Paco is forfeiting oh. from that race. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, looks like we're just gonna move on. Okay, so that means 1-0 to Runner Watcher. This is game number two coming up. Which means Paco now has to sweep to win. Yeah, and it's, and it's surprising because Paco having a really good run, like, no major mistakes at all, getting that, uh, like, getting a really clean world too, 
and just a minor mistake in Star Wars 2 cost him basically the run. And Runner Watcher taking really good advantage and really safe strats to just finish the race. Both that and getting kind of unlucky in Star Wars 4. I was really hoping he had hit that low percent strat though. Yeah, same. Rooting for him because, you know, when someone goes for that low percent strat, it just it looks cool. Yeah. <laughs> TLD throwing out the theories. I. <clears throat> I was kind of thrown into that situation in the Super Mario Brothers tournament, the worthless one. But I didn't quite pull off the sweep. Paco talking a little bit in his stream about um, what should he do on that situation in Star Wars 4. Yeah, the one in particular where he had the red Yoshi at the end, there really wasn't nothing. I, there's no blue Yoshi around, or blue... I keep saying blue Yoshi. Blue shell, isn't... Wait a minute. It's blue shell, yeah. I'm trying to think if there was one, like, right before the finish of the level. It's, I don't usually pay attention to that. Don't take off with PCB from the first one, pick up the second one. Okay. And then you should have enough time to get to the thing still. <laughs> Did you say that Runner Watcher got at 1245? I think that was it. What major mistakes did Runner Watcher did? Well, mostly DS1, he lost his power up there. And getting hit in Bowser didn't... Um, so I feel like we can expect probably cleaner runs from both runners um, in this second race. And I'm pretty sure they're getting ready to go. Spaco 5 seems like it's ready. Looks like he's ready. And we're just waiting on Runner Watcher on my screen. Ready, here we go. One, and that's gonna be start. Now I'm wondering if there's maybe just a little bit of pressure on Runner Watcher right now, knowing he's up one of. And pressure on X Paco as well. Um, knowing that he's one behind um, because of that minor, like that major mistake in Star Wars 2. But that just goes to show anything can really happen in these matches. Yeah, definitely. It's incredible how they're like basically synced in my multi stream. It's incredible. They're like on the same, probably the same frame. I need a brief yeah. refresh. There we go. <laughs> Get your popcorn out because this is a race, my friends. No 61s again. Successful box jumps all around. Runner Watcher crushing that uh, second Koopa and like getting really, really tight on that uh, white platform. That was spooky, but he, he gets it. It's actually mm -hmm. something I used to do and I saw many people do a long time ago, but I don't see as many people use it now. That is so spoopy. I would never crush that Koopa. I feel like I would fall straight into the pit. But both getting 59, so 
looking that really good and consistent on that world one i think the only main difference is like x paco's uh iggy's room one is a bit faster with just that optimal cage scraps oh for two on shell jumps yeah paco goes for it doesn't get it and runner watcher just completely goes over it So, just about even. Let's see how much separation there is here in the castle. Runner Watcher going with safe. Climbing across the lava. Paco with another nice 281. Yeah. Extremely clean um, cage grabs there. Really spoopy as well to jump like right over that potaboo. That yeah, you, even I get a little scared doing races because yeah. I don't want to get hit by the potaboo or drop in. Yeah, and that last jump on the last cage uh, before the auto scroller, before the midway, is also really spoopy. And this is my least favorite. But yeah, uh, they're literally the same race as before to this point. Xbaco with a 241 Iggy and Runner Watcher with a 239. Exactly the same uh, timer they got for their last race. So to this yeah. point, it could be anyone's race. Like they're race racing each other's ghosts so far. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now, there could be some separation here due to flight speeds, so it's all about who gets the faster speed. Oh, but Runner Watcher is getting a P speed before Paco does. Yeah, Runner Watcher is slightly ahead on my screen. And it seems to me that Runner Watcher has a little bit better of a flight speed. But I could be wrong. Oh, but I had to... Yeah, he was a little too high there. Yeah, Runner Watcher had a better flight speed, but had to adjust to get that key while Paco saves that difference in flight speed by getting a smooth key grab. Now let's hope both of these runners can survive this stage without getting hit or losing their power. Or without stomping another Koopa. <laughs> yeah. Well, doesn't stop it, but he gets the shell. He does get it. Can they keep him? No. Nope. Paco has the buttery shell, and so does Runner Watcher. Yeah, Runner Watcher struggles a little bit there to get that key, but gets in there. No big trouble. Paco just slightly ahead. That room one, no biggie. Flies through that second boring. No flying under. <laughs> no flying under. Oh no! Oh, Runner Watcher didn't have a sharp enough turn back, so he fell in. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did we say yikes at the same time? Nice. That was legendary. Did an ex Paco with with a 369 big boo door and a 339 um for DSH. Really, really good ghost house. Really clean run from here right now. Um just as good as the other one. So let's just see how Star Wars goes for him. Hey, Wild Runner Watcher elected to get cape and is now going back through. Oh, and a late zip. 
Yeah, Paco struggling a little bit there on that first sip to the right, but then he gets that second sip to the left really smooth. Yeah, he got a little lucky, I think, to go down on the first one. And Paco seems to save his power up in Star Wars 2 this time. Just. Um. Just spinning those fishes so he doesn't get hit. A little scary moment for a runner watcher. Super M37 Smashola. <laughs> I love saying that. X Baco with the perfect execution for Star Wars 3 getting that Y92. And getting the apply for that key. Oh, that was a decent second zip by Watcher. 285. Yeah, getting that 285. And Paco with the K. Much, much better star roll for this time. Yeah, getting a 272. Really good. Best and, you can do there. Yeah. I was here to run that watcher, no struggle at all. Spinning those fishes at the beginning of Star Wars 2. Looking good for. That was a little bit spooky right there with that last fish, but he gets through it pretty nice. Before some people say, best you can do with that specific strat, I know you can get a 73. <laughs> Ex Baco going for the damage boost strat. You're gonna get hit right there, jumps, and gets that cape easy peasy. Wanna watch her with that 191 on Star Wars 3. This has been a much cleaner run for Paco. This is gonna be a really solid time. I believe if he doesn't do anything wrong here, it's gonna be sub 1050. And Runner Watcher here, going for that kind of safer strat on Star Wars 4. For me, it's a little bit spooky to float down those platforms. I feel like I'm gonna hit them and just stand in them. But he does it pretty nice. And he's into Bowser's castle. Missing the door, final boss. Final boss, dude. Gets us all, every time. <laughs> Paco with a really clean face one on Cape Kill. And since Runner Watcher doesn't have a power, uh, Fire Flower, he's gonna have to wait for this cycle. Watcher keeps his cape through dark room, so both runners on Bowser with the power up. So really solid run from both of them. Um, Paco with a really cl a clean face too on Bowser, but we see him uh, taking off for that uh, first hit on second face to the right, facing right. That always spoofs me. I feel like he's gonna throw the Mega Koopa off screen to the right, but he gets it no props. And a really good cake kill is going to result in a really good time here. Oh my goodness. SRL time of 10.47. GG. Super GG's for x right there. That is that insane. Was super. Then we're going to see Ronald Watcher here. He's on second phase. He doesn't go for cape kill. Wait for those ball cycles. And you know, this race wasn't that bad, being only about 44 seconds going in behind his brand new PB. Um, sick Brad Casey, but no, I got the best run tonight. 
What was the best time you got, Bob? 10.43. Dude, that's epic. That's nice. It's gonna be so fun going into the later stages and seeing all of these good times compete against each other. I want to see multiple races where it's two runners getting sub 1050. Meanwhile, runner watcher missed the first one but got the second. Bob, did you see my death here on Bowser Phase 3? Right through the Mecha Koopa off to kill him, but then I got hit with his getting going down. With him going down. No. It's probably you... gonna be the death of the tournament. Wait, in the fight, did you throw him off to the right or what happened? I threw the Mecha Koopa up up to kill Bowser, uh, but then when it was like going down to hit him. I got crushed down and died. Oh, okay. On Ouch. that last hit, yep. <laughs> and so, 12.31 on SRL for Runner Watcher, and we're going to the third and final match. So yeah, Runner Watcher saying in chat that it could have been a PB if he wouldn't have jumped into the abyss in Donut Secret House, which means really, really good consistency from him. If it wasn't for that major mistake, he would have been just behind X Paco. So, really clean yeah, runs from both of them. That was very unfortunate. He went to get peace beat, I think, and didn't turn around sharp enough. And that was real unfortunate. So yeah, they're quickly going into the race room here for the third and deciding game. Yeah, I'd rather watch you saying uh, he should be left scrolling. The second room, ghost house. It's something I always do, actually. Even if I get that really fast strat, um, damage boosting through the boorings in room one of DSH, I always left scroll because I want to be able to fly through that second boring and not worry about its position. What's Eldad Paco's PB? Um, I have recorded that he was seated off his 945 uh, cloud run. Oh, we're getting started already. Getting that ninth seed. I'm not sure of his glitchless PB though. This final match in this underway. A couple seconds off. Let me catch up. Yeah, I'm gonna refresh as well. And they're off. It seems like they're off. They're already on it on that third and final race. Reminder, this is best of three. So the one that wins this race is the winner of the match and the round. And it's gonna move forward. X Paco 5 going for some shell swag right there. <laughs> the end for the third time, two 360s. Runner Watcher crushes that Koopa again. Spooby Strad, but I like it. <laughs> Fifty times. Yep. Oh, I can't wait to see what happens later in this race. This is so exciting. The rubber match. 
Yeah, it's always fun to see these uh, matches that go to the third race. It's anyone's game at this point. So it's really fun to watch and really entertaining. Hope you guys are having a good time. Oh, he got it. He got one. X Baco with that. 76. Why I four? One game, second of advantage. <laughs> Shell jump wins, always. Game over. <laughs> game over. Come back tomorrow. Might get another 81. And he does. He gets it. Showing that consistency right there. I like it. He spends no extra time on the fence. Um, dear mods, the speedrunner Louis underscore failed to do it to him, so he needs to be purged. <laughs> nice one, Icterus. And actually, a fat. A little bit faster, Iggy, for Runner Watcher this time. Yeah, one second faster. <laughs> That's only a really improvement chat, OMG scoops. But Fika does it. Like, it's no problem at all. Bye forever. Louis, we love you. It's okay. <laughs> Standard cake grabs all around. One time I want to see someone go for DP1 guy. So it's back with a 362. Easy peasy. And Runner Watcher with the uh, 59. 59. Yeah. My stream buffer fell a little bit there. I'm gonna refresh so I've been kinda synced. Now the second race had really clean DS1s from both of them. So let's hope that this is the case as well. They don't lose the shell, don't get hit, don't crush the shell. Don't get the buttery shells. Yo, Truman, just subscribe with Twitch Prime. Yo, thank you, Truman, on behalf of the community. Yeah, thank you, Truman, for that subscription. And please make sure to post your Super M37 Smashola. Last trip into DSH tonight. Well, let's see. Runner Watcher, he does it this time. He did the safety scroll. But doesn't quite get the fly through the boring. Because it was a little bit off. And x Paco getting a 368, just one in-game second behind of his other secret houses, but still really, really good. Showing that consistency once again. He has found the consistency, it seems. It is now time, once again, for everyone's favorite emote. <laughs> Super M37 is Mashola. Yeah, missing. Was, yeah, missing that first aim. Oh, this is probably his worst zips of the night. Oh, 
no, no, no. Go back up. Now he's gonna have to do some spin flying here. Oof. So we're running a watcher here in Star Wars 1, missing that key. Yeah, it's a good start for beginners to do that strat, but that's the risk you take. You can go too far to the left. He gets it after the second try, so it's not that bad. Um, but he's just gonna have to go fast through Star Wars 2. <laughs> Smash you fat. Oh my god, Dev. Paco with a really good Star Wars 2 and getting that fresh 192 in Star Wars 3. Flying through Star Wars, literally. Runner Watcher with the 59. I believe both of them actually got a 59. Yeah, Paolo, we apologize for the delay on our commentary and the stream. Um, it's because we're watching on a multi-stream, so we're slightly ahead. So we apologize for that. But it's better for us to be a little bit ahead than a little bit behind. Better watch her wait for the flight strat, which I like. And he goes high for Star World 4. Yeah, again, taking that safe strat. x 5 here, going for the for the damage boost in room 5 in Bowser's Castle again. And gets it with ease. This is... Oh, uh, let's see. Should be 58. This is gonna be really close. No. I don't think it's gonna be that close anymore. This probably won't be a sub-1050, but still, a really, really solid time. Yeah, definitely. For me, it's incredible to see how consistent these top this top runners are with Cape Kill. They just do it easy peasy. Yeah, that's after several years, you can almost do it with your eyes closed. Runner, watch your yeah. Unfortunate hit. We have Silver Star with the actual facts. Cape Kill, what is that? I don't that... know, Silver Star. What is that, <laughs> Mr. 1041 Runner? That first state of, of phase two for Xbaku to the right. Always scares me. I feel like the Mikey Koopa is gonna miss, but he just gets it every time. Roller Watcher out of phase one um, without a power up. So let's hope he's really careful with his fire up, so the uh, fireball, so he can get the the mushroom. And Paco's about to finish. Dot done. He needs to dot done. There it is. <laughs> well, congratulations to X Paco 5. He has advanced to the next round. Yeah, GG's for him. After a rough first uh, race, um, which was really unfortunate that lost, like when he lost his power up in Star Wars 2, but proving that his consistency is there with um, this two runs that he had after. Really, really good. That sub-1050 on that second race, really amazing run. Would not be surprised if he goes far in the tournament. Me neither. And trying to locate 
on the bracket as Runner Watcher goes through the final phase. Yeah, Xbaco, if you're uh, interested in a short interview with the commentators, you can join the waiting room channel in our Discord, so every streamer can drag you. And GG's to run their watcher. Re three solid runs, um, some mistakes here and there, but really overall, really good from, like, he was right behind Xbaco most of the time, so really really ggs to both of them gg well played and congrats one more time runner watcher on your pv earlier tonight yeah congrats, congrats dude congrats paco on the w and next round he gets p jelly that's going to be a good one to watch yeah if any of you guys are down for some interviews uh let us know if you can join the waiting room if not we're gonna you are last comments about the race and talk a little bit about tomorrow. Just let us know if you can. Okay, they're both there. Def, if you would give us the honor. Thank you. What's up, guys? GG's to both of you. Hi, Mom. Thanks. <laughs> Am I getting a bad echo? Hold on, sorry. <laughs> I don't know why does X Paco just talk and I start laughing. I always have stop it. stop laughing at me, Molly. Oh GG's RW, really, really good opponent. You have some really nice runs. How do you feel about it, RW? Uh you know, I got my PB right before these races, so I feel pretty good. Uh, obviously I didn't expect to beat Paco. Um, it sounds like the first race was pretty funny. If there's one thing I'm disappointed about, it's running into the pit in my second race, because that would have been another PB if I hadn't done that, I think, so... I just need to... I think I need to practice Ghost House and, uh, and Bowser, and that'll... Honestly, those two things I can probably save, like, 20, 25 seconds on. What's your PB now? 11.34. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're only, like, 20 seconds off me. And I feel like with just a cape kill and just a little bit faster on BSH and you're gonna be in sub 11, 10 pace, no probs at all. And then with just sips, then you're gonna get the sub 11. So yeah, that uh, dipping mishap was unfortunate in this round. Yeah, zips always. I want that Super N37 Smashola. <laughs> so how did you feel, Paco? How did it feel to be back in 11 exit? Well, that first run didn't feel so good, but I think that the second and third runs were pretty good. Got a shell jump. At least. So I don't can, know what happened in that first run. So do you feel like x is gonna go back to that 11 exit grind, or is it just for the tourney? Uh... <laughs> uh... Putting you on the spot here. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. <laughs> I don't know, you never know. Eleven if Aaron stops playing Fortnite, maybe someone will get a nine forty four, but if he doesn't, then I might have to. Yo. Ooh, boy. I'm excited. Getting me excited out here. <laughs> what about Bob? Bobby, you you know. Yeah, nine, nine, you nine, never know. You never know. Yeah, okay. Fair so, enough. So yeah, like Bob said, ex Baco, you'll be facing P Jelly in the next round. What do you feel? How do you feel about that? Ugh, pee jelly. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, I'll eventually have a good opponent. <laughs> oh my god, no! look at him throwing his shade. The burn. The what's, real what's burn. PJ Someone clean that. Uh, PJ has a 10.56, I feel. I have oh, it in my notes here. Yeah, 10.54. 10 like 10 10.54, actually. That's certainly good enough to beat me. We had a 24 seed because he got a 1059 before that. Um, so yeah, and Runner Watcher will be facing Bob. Do you have any clue? The big Z. Ooh. So big Z yesterday, getting some solid runs as well against. What was he? 
against P. Jelly. Um, what were the uh, yeah? Oh, P. Jelly. What were uh, his times? Mm, I'm not sure. He didn't get a sub eleven. I'm pretty uh, sure. And what was uh? All right, so what's the best run so far? Ten forty three. Uh, it's gotta be. That's, that's. What, what was your other time? Something like 50. 50? Alright. So it's almost beatable. You're almost beatable, Bob. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bob with that consistency, I swear. So good. This category, you should be consistent. There's, you know, no real curves in it, except for zips, I guess. Yeah, with safe strats, all you really got to do is not have a brain fart. You'll like have me. a sub eleven. Yeah, and so too. That's yeah. Star World Four, though. Four, that four. was ugly. What should I have done differently? Well, I should have gone for the Yoshi at first, probably. Yeah, Bob was rooting for you for that low percent strat. I was. I should have. <laughs> I practiced it right before. I wanted to do it. Yeah, it would have been cool. GG's to both of you, and thank you so much for joining the interview. GG, yeah, thanks. And we're Good excited time. to see what the tournament has for you both in the loser's bracket as well as the winner's bracket. So we'll see you guys around. Thank you so much thanks. for joining the interview, and thank you for the race. Thanks very much, Moni. Thanks. thanks, Bob, and thanks, Paco. Good races. See Good you on the GG's. Okay, and so before we go, I guess we should talk about what's coming up tomorrow. Yeah, Bob, you want to give us a heads up? I have I have four matches here for Wednesday. The first one is, sorry if I mispronounce this, Zane, X-E-I-N, 64, versus Dots, 2 p.m. Eastern. 6 p.m. Eastern, looks like we have... Dunkle Gothic. I'm so bad at pronouncing names, I apologize if I mess it up. Dunkle Gothic. <laughs> I think that's the actual <laughs> pronunciation. Thank you. And going up against Travic Talks. And then that's... at 9 30. Go ahead. Yeah, that no, that that Dunkle Gothic versus Travic Talks is uh losers round uh one. So we're gonna see all of these players that already lost in their first match. We're gonna start seeing them coming back for that loser's racket, so that's going to be cool to see. Go ahead, good luck. And those are going to pick up too as we go on, but anyway. <laughs> um, 9.30 Eastern, we have Arias, 13, versus Matthew Gaming Live. And finally, at 11 p.m., Jackson D77 versus the Mario Brothers King Cosmic D12. And Cosmic D12 versus Jackson, already a match that happened in the Super Mario Bros. Warpless tournament. And actually, Jackson uh, beat Cosmic in that race. So it's cool to see um, both of these players added back against each other, but in another completely different game. So it's going to be really cool to see that race because these two players have seen each other's eyes before. <laughs> So yeah, that, that's what's coming up tomorrow for us and for our tournament. So make sure to follow us on Twitter and follow this stream if you're here. And thank you, Bob, so much for joining me on commentary tonight. Hey, Tim, and thank you for joining me. <laughs> so we'll see you guys soon tomorrow for more races. And thank you guys for joining. Yes, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.